boom, there it is. This is the back end of Abundance Plus streaming network through a program called Uscreen. And as you can see here, the newest episode of my Discovering Home series called The Art of Harvest is up. It's scheduled to publish tomorrow, Friday, March 18th on Abundance Plus exclusively. But since it is my film and I love you guys, I'm going to sneak some footage out for you right now. We're going to watch some of it, but before we get started in that, I just got to say something. This is episode three, which took me longer to film and edit than the first two combined. I put a lot into making this film and I was a little worried about what the end result would be following the huge response I got from episode two featuring Tess the Shepherdess. Her story was so big and resonated deeply with so many people, I was just kind of worried that how am I going to follow that up? But from the feedback I've gotten so far from the few people who have seen it, I had nothing to be worried about. People are absolutely digging this film as well. Without further ado, I'm going to roll the intro segment with a little bit of censoring in it to keep YouTube happy and you'll know what I mean when you see it. There's always an anxiety that I have, whether I'm butchering a sheep or a rabbit. And when I know that I'm gonna be taking the life of something like that, I always want to make sure that I'm set up perfectly for the situation so that I know things will go smoothly. I just like to have everything ready to go. That gives me a sense of calm when I get started. I'll usually burn some sage. It's kind of a tradition of smudging yourself to be present in the moment, cleanse yourself with the smoke of that sage. Just ha having kind of a marker for like, all right, now it's time. Here I am, ready to do this. If you stripped away all of the the modern things that we have to do in the world and the modern technology, like what are some of the, the essential skills that a person would need to do? Harvesting or growing their own food. I wanted to, to be capable of that. When I give that animal over to somebody else to slaughter or to cut and wrap the meat, I don't really know like how much care they're putting into it. Are they wasting parts of the animal? If I'm willing to take its life so that to feed myself and my family, I want to make the most out of it. Having that control over the harvest is what is important to me so that I can just really uh, honor that animal, make the most out of it. Part of what took production for this film a lot longer than my other ones, we were simultaneously filming an instructional video series on how to properly skin and tan a sheep hide, as well as a haggis making video. Those instructional videos are also set to release tomorrow on Abundance Plus in the basic membership package, but I'm going to also give you a little taste of what that looks like now. So the next step in preparing the hide for tanning is going to be fleshing the hide. So what I have here is a fleshing beam. Um, this is one that's designed to be leaned against like this and work in this position. Um, a 
proper fleshing knife looks like this. It's designed for fleshing hides, anything from a raccoon to a cowhide. Um, it has a bevel on either side there that can be used. A person who is doing this at, you know, on a small farm and doesn't have specific tools like that might be able to find more easily at, at an old antique store, a thrift store, a, um, a draw knife like this, which is for woodworking, but can also be used for fleshing. You just wouldn't want this blade to be overly sharp. The other thing I'll wear to keep from getting too much blood and guts on myself is putting a raincoat on. A uh, person could even just punch two holes in a trash bag to put it over themselves. So I'm going to put this on to keep my clothes clean. So here's our sheep hide ready to be fleshed. And I put it over the beam like this, leaving some of the, the upper portion here, the neck, draped down over the back. So that way I can lean against this and it keeps it from sliding down as I work. My friend Sean there, he's a fantastic primitive skills teacher. So if you guys are looking to either do your own high tanning or make haggis, these videos came out fantastic and I think you're going to get a lot of value out of them. I'm going to show you one more scene from the film here on the way out, but before we do, I just want to let you know that if you are not a member of Abundance Plus uh, and you want to watch this, if you sign up at the inspiration level, you can watch this film along with the Rooted series, while they're still featuring Jessica Sowards, Divergence featuring Farmstead Meatsmith, and if you want the instructional videos along with several hundred other instructional videos already on the platform, you can sign up on the basic membership level to get those and you'll get Joel Salatin's Masterclasses, Farmstead Meatsmith Pig Harvest and Butchering Masterclass, a bunch of other educational videos, and now also the high tanning videos on how to make your own haggis. There's a link below in the video description to sign up, and if you'd like 10% off your membership, use the coupon code down below as well. For those of you watching on a television and you can't see links, there's a QR code popping up right down there right now that you can scan with your phone sitting right from your couch. And by the way, I, I do get a commission if you sign up using my link or my discount code, so thank you in advance for that. With all that said, here's one more scene from Discovering Home, Episode 3, The Art of Harvest. I will make sure to save as many of the marrow bones as possible. Uh, in these days, that's becoming more of a kind of fashionable thing to do. People have heard more about using marrow for making bone broth and everything. But with some of those bones then, there's uh, tools that I can make, the Stone Age kind of tools. Not that I need those as a person today to actually use in the world, but with my children, it's, it's a neat thing to say, oh, look, you know, this bone, you could actually fracture it like this and sharpen it to make a, an arrowhead, or it could be made into a bone needle for sewing in this way. If it's a, you know, a, a ram, I might keep the skull of it, clean the skull and have that as something that's just a, you know, kind of a unique thing to keep around. The hooves can be boiled and popped off and the, the actual kind of sheath on the hoof can be made into a rattle or decorations like that. Uh, we use the scrotum of the, the ram to make a bag from. This is one here that's been bark tanned and then um, a piece of leather put in the top here as a drawstring. Uh, the stomach is, uh, like I've mentioned already, about making haggis, but the stomach can also be bark tanned to make bags from. I've used the intestines to make sausage casing. All the extra fat on the meat that's trimmed off, um, the fat, the call fat, the fat around the kidneys, the suet fat, I render that and make it into a, um, a clean white tallow that, um, you know, that we put into jars and we use then for, for baking and frying and uh, you know, it can be even used for hide tanning then as a tanning oil if it's added to some soap. 